My name is Lauren Lagua. I work for Northrop Grumman Undersea Systems, um, and I'm going to be sharing how I use um, Comsol specifically for rapid prototyping design cycles. As a brief overview, um, I'm a mechanical and acoustic engineer. Um, I do everything related to sonar systems. So from acoustic design and console, 3D packaging and um, like 3D like modeling software, um, manufacturing integration, and even testing these systems. So at the bottom of this page is just one of our um, systems that we create at our undersea systems location. This is a toad side scan sonar platform just so you kind of have an image in your head as we go through some of the um, slides today. Um, so I work for a sonar team that's mostly research and development funded and what that means really is that a lot of times we don't have a lot of money, don't have a lot of time, but we're working as a team to create innovative solutions in a fast-paced environment. Um, and in order to do that, um, I we have basically implemented something that we like to call this rapid design phase or rapid prototyping design phase, um, which throughout each of these steps, Comsol is um, implemented in a different way. And I'm going to share each of those steps as we go through this, but they include a rapid design phase, a prototyping phase, and then a test and design verification phase. Um, and this, these three steps basically are iterated upon and we can go through them multiple times sometimes before we finalize the design and move into um, final manufacturing. So we begin with the actual design. So the transducer design in my case, um, and this is where we are experimenting with um, the materials, geometry, frequency, um, any set design parameters in order to meet our overall system goals. Um, this is where we'll experiment with new materials sometimes, um, new piezoelectrics, et cetera. And we use multiple packages within Comsol. So pressure acoustics, solid mechanics, electrostatics, electrical circuits, and then obviously the multi-physics coupling that goes along with that, including piezoelectrics and fluid solid interaction. Um, so like I mentioned, um, sometimes we experiment with new materials and something that's really complicated and difficult sometimes with using new materials is vendors don't always give you all of the information and material properties for those. So we utilize Comsol in order to actually estimate those material properties. Um, so we model whatever information we do have from the vendor test the materials and compare them directly with our console model in order to estimate those unknown material properties and get us um, close if not matching test results in order to input those new material properties into the transducer design. So then once we get the model up and running, we actually go into the prototyping phase. Um, so as we're building these prototypes, uh, we have preliminary little tests that happen throughout the manufacturing process that we can compare back to the model. Um, and sometimes they don't match right away. Um, and sometimes this is due to the model not being correct, maybe physics being missing, et cetera. But it's also occasionally due to a manufacturing issue in the prototype. Um, so for an example, um, if I'm building up a transducer with a piezoelectric element, and bonding it to a backing substrate, there might it might not have gotten a perfect bond, or maybe there's an air bubble trapped behind the piezoelectric. Um, when this happens, I'm able to make a hypothesis of what's causing the prototype to fail and model that in Comsol and compare what that looks like in Comsol and how the test results of that potential defect influence the model and compare it to the actual test event and actually troubleshoot and find manufacturing issues um, throughout the process to be able to correct them quickly. So once we have our prototype up and working and we know we have it matching the model throughout that um, to that point, we take the acoustic transducer prototype and do um, 
basically system level testing on the prototype. So this includes electrical testing and acoustic testing. So for electrical testing, um, we do impedance testing and capacitance measurements and things like that. But for the acoustic testing, we have this um, state of the art acoustic test facility at our location. Um, it's the largest indoor test pool in the private industry. It's this 50 foot diameter, 400,000 gallon tank um, that's actually lined with redwood to make it a ideal acoustic environment um, to absorb sounds in a broadband aspect, to make it simulate like you're in open water for acoustic testing. So for these transducers, we're able to measure transmit voltage response, far field voltage sensitivity, and things like radiation patterns for those that are familiar with acoustic analysis. Um, so we will take the results that we get from our acoustic test facility and actually bring them back into Comsol. So Comsol for the acoustics package, you're able to output those exact same tests that we run in our acoustic test facility. So the impedance testing, capacitance measurements, acoustic testing, all of those things, we can directly relate back to the real test data and both verify our model, tweak the model if necessary, and then go back to the beginning and go back to that original design. Do we have to change the design based on what we learned from this prototype and be able to quickly iterate on those three steps again, going back to that design um, and changing parameters and materials as needed to optimize the transducer performance. So just as an overview, um, so this rapid prototype design cycles for our transducers specifically allows us to design, prototype, test, and verify, sometimes within as little time span as a week, um, in order to iterate on the design really quickly and innovate in new and try out new um, designs in a very quick manner. Um, it allows us to resolve manufacturing issues also very quickly, identifying those early on in the design phase um, and being able to mitigate and fix those uh, before they become a larger issue in the full scale design. Um, it's also allowed us to estimate unknown material properties both in um, like new polyurethanes and new piezoelectrics um, in order to advance the technology for transducer design. So Comsol in general has made a huge impact at North of Grumman and for me. Um, so I wanted to share one of the systems that was made possible by this type of design um, iterative, iterative process. So this is the MicroSAS system. So this is a two-sided side scan sonar that is on a unmanned micro UUV. So for anyone that um, is familiar with this type of thing, um, it's, it, it's basically a small scale, like six inch diameter vehicle that um, you can pre-program permissions. And because of its very small scale, we were constrained significantly in size, weight, and power for our system. So we had to go about trying to solve this sonar and acoustic problem to make the best sonar possible, but in a small scale and um, conserving energy as much as possible. So for those that are unfamiliar with sonar imagery, this image on the bottom left is a traditional 2D um, synthetic aperture sonar image. Um, this is actually of a ship that's sunk in our bay right outside of our facility. So we love to use it as sort of target practice on our new designs. Um, but what's really cool about this specific system is we've implemented interferometric or bathymetric imagery. So meaning that we actually have two sonars on both sides of the vehicle where you're able to look at the same image from two different aspect ratios and get 3D, you basically interpolate 3D information from that, just like how your eyes work. Seeing two different aspect ratios of the same object gives you that depth information. So the second and third picture are basically that same first image, but processed using interferometric processing. Um, and you can kind of see that the ship is sort of in this big trough and the, um, 
the head of the ship is sort of sticking out out of that hole. So information that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to achieve in a 2D image, we're able to see in this 3D processed method. So this is just some of the mechanical information from it. But basically what we have is we have a projector array and a hydrophone array, and those are the main acoustic um, parts that I specifically worked on. The rest is more electrical packaging. But so the kind of follow-on sonar that we were able to um, generate and create because again of this rapid prototyping cycling and the lessons learned we learned from the original design um, is the microsas mv which stands for basically medium size vehicle this is a completely integrated self-contained sonar that can go on any platform anyone feels like um, so it's a unique um, unique design where we're not platform specific anyone that wants one of these could get one. Um, but we have, again, that capability of doing 2D synthetic aperture sonar and 3D bathymetric imagery, which was all, again, made possible by our console analysis and team.